Bonjour, to welcome back to our channel today. We are taking you to private cabin of Marie Antoinette. So, on va. Today we go into a very special part of the Chateau de Versailles, the private chambers, also called the private cabinets, of Marie Antoinette. They are less known to the public and are only visitable with a guide and in very small groups. In our case, we were only eight, including the guide. These private cabinets of the Queen are hidden behind her official grand appartement, where no one had the liberty of doing as they wished, due to the restrictions of the etiquette. To avoid it and gain some privacy, the kings and the queens had private spaces built behind the grand appartement. We recently visited the king's private spaces and the video of that visit can be found on our channel. Going up through a small staircase, we find ourselves in what appears to be a much smaller cabinet. The library supplement filled with books. This room connects to the cabinet doré on one side and Marie Antoinette's library on the other. It should be noted that Marie Antoinette was not the first queen to use these spaces, but she was indeed the one who extended and decorated them the most, which contributed to her unfortunate reputation of Madame de Fessit. The cabinet doré was first done under the order of the wife of Louis XV, Marie Lezinska. However, it was then redecorated under Marie Antoinette in 1783. As its name suggests, gold is everywhere in this cabinet. The Queen often played music here with composers. Her children spent a lot of time here as well. A painting of a pineapple above the doorway adds an exotic touch to the cabinet's decor. We enter the main library room through a trompe l'oeil door that is camouflaged to look like a continuation of bookshelves with fake books on them. Her monogram M and A adorns the drawers. Even though Marie Antoinette was not a big reader, the books in these chambers hold incredible value and knowledge, particularly on history of France. Behind another camouflage door hides the Cabinet de la Méridienne, a place where Marie Antoinette would use for rest. It is connected by a narrow corridor to the main chamber of the Queen in the Grand Appartement, and it is via this space she would flee her official chamber to join the King on that fateful day of October 6, 1789, when the crowds broke into Versailles. I must admit, it was very moving to be standing in the place where such intimate detail of a grand event in the history of France happened. We then climb another set of stairs to the second floor of the cabinet to find ourselves in the private dining room with exquisite service sets ordered for the Queen. This place feels even more private with its narrow passages and small rooms. It was designed this way to allow the Queen disconnect from the grandiose of the Grand Appartement and be able to receive her family and very close friends in whom she could confide in privately. Marie Antoinette invited her relatives, including her sister-in-law, Madame Elisabeth, and her brothers-in-law, the Counts of Provence and Artois. Her children spent a lot of time with her here. She also received her friends, including the Count Axel de Fersen from Sweden. Over here, the decor is sober, yet refined. The prestigious Toile de Jouy is used on the walls and furniture, highlighting Marie Antoinette's exquisite taste. By the way, we visited the Museum of the Historic Factory of Toile de Jouy a couple of years back. It's available on our channel as well as in the description of this video. The visit continues passing through the magnificent Hall of Bilia and down to the corridor that both Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette used to visit each other's apartments without being seen by the court. This corridor was also used on that significant morning of October 6, 1789. I got chills just from standing there. It felt intimate and extremely personal. The following part of the visit was the bathroom, situated on the ground floor of the chateau, with a direct view onto the marble court. This area used to be occupied by the apartments of the eighth child of Louis XV and Marie Lezinska, Madame Sophie, until her death on March 3rd, 1782, and then converted by Marie Antoinette into an extension of her private chambers. This bathroom is magnificent. The woodwork features dolphins, swans, shells, and other elements that invoke bath. The bed is brought from the bathroom of Louis XVI at the Chateau de Fontainebleau. Back in the day, it was believed that bathing would be tiring, so a bed for rest was necessary afterwards. And speaking of bathing at Versailles in general, the kings and the queens of France were not dirty and smelly people. Louis XV would take bath several times a day, while Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI took baths daily. The rumors of monarchs being dirty and filled with lice were spread during the revolution. These plants in the pots 
they get them out for the summer they keep them out here and then they put them back in I absolutely love this garden because it's so beautiful it makes you feel like you're at Versailles but not really and this is where they keep the plants in winter I just wanted to share my impressions, let's say, from the visit and uh, this is an incredible place to be in uh, in a sense that the visit takes you to this beautiful cabinet, right? And you don't feel like it's, um, it's a part of Versailles but at the same time you really feel the presence of someone living there and the most important, the most amazing thing is that you really feel her exquisite taste to the point that it gives you like chills on your skin. <sighs> the smell reminds me of my mom's foundation poudre when I was a kid, it smelled like that. Just roses, roses, roses. I feel like every time you come to Versailles, in summer, you have to come to the Jardin and just smell the roses and other flowers. It's absolutely magnificent. Yes, we're a little bit late because the roses look like they're about to like... Like they've already like, you know, <laughs> done their job being beautiful. Uh, they flowered already, but uh, they still smell magnificent. And we were so happy to see the Toile de Juive printed fabric in the private cabinet of Marie Antoinette that we made an episode two years ago because when you see these small details it makes you so happy because you are like we are really into history and small things connect one another Honestly I can walk around here the whole day it's so beautiful, so calm Sinan feels itchy for some reason every time he's in the gardens I don't know why Because of the insects Yeah but they're not even sitting on you I don't know, I think cycles yeah <laughs> and the um the roses they just create this beautiful perfume and i think it accompanies our visit so well because we were just in the private space of marie antoinette and we know she loved roses so oh this one's amazing amazing so it feels perfect So cute, so cute, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. It's so nice to walk around here, it's just so pleasant, greenery everywhere. For the first time we saw Sardabal and Olangeri because last time when we came here in 2019, we were so tired, we visited yeah. the garden, but Sardabal was closed and I think we just skipped Lolangeri because we were so tired, extremely we were tired. tired. Yes. And at the end of the day we were like barely making it to the exit. <laughs> And that's it for today, thank you for joining us. If you would like to see more of these videos, please don't forget to like, share and comment below. Until the next episode, au revoir.